Hey everybody. I have been sitting here this evening looking at my native tank and not long ago I discovered that I did not treat my rocks well enough, or so I assumed. I discovered that I had Spirogyra algae. It's a very difficult algae. Uh, it's often called green hair algae. It's a filamentous algae and it grows in long strands. It's really difficult to get rid of. And I thought I did a pretty good job cleaning it up. But as I was sitting here, I noticed that it is all over that rock. I know this never comes out well on video. That rock just sort of glares out and you can't see it. But take my word for it. That rock is covered in that green hair algae again. And it's just flowing off the top of it. I've also noticed that on this end of the tank where I've put this new LED and power head you will see how much of it I have actually growing on the front glass already. So, I've been thinking about doing a video recently discussing the difference between off-walk grazers and algae eaters. I have a lot of people ask me uh, you know, to recommend good algae eaters for them. And I've learned to do follow-up questions. I've learned to find out whether they really want an algae eater or if they want an off-walk grazer. So here's the difference. Off walks is surface growth, it's biofilm, and it contains a lot more than algae. In the same way when you buy algae wafers, a good quality algae wafer is going to contain spirulina and a variety of different things rather than just compressed algae. It's got a lot of proteins in it, it's a very well balanced meal actually. And that's what off walks is, in a sense. It's a very balanced sense of nutrition. There's a lot of protein in it. There's a lot of calcium in it. There's micro crustaceans and worms. There's all sorts of good stuff in off walks. Algae is just algae. It's just this green, stringy plant. And an algae-eating fish would be a fish like a molly or a guppy or we can come over here and have a look at my garami tank because this is a great example actually. Garamis are fantastic algae-eating fish. So this tank used to have a lot of that spirogyra algae in it and one of the reasons it had so much of that algae in it was because of the lighting I had on it at the time. The LEDs that I've been uh, tinkering around with on my new native tank that we were just looking at are actually the LEDs I used to have on this tank and I had a ton of problems with that spirogyra algae. I actually shot a video about it where I discussed the lighting and I removed the lights and took them off the tank. If I can find that video I'll go ahead and attach a card. It's actually worth watching. I go, uh, go into a little bit of detail about why it's causing the algal growth and how LEDs work. I know I just talked about that recently but it's a good video. If I can find it I'll attach a card. Uh, again it's worth watching. So, uh, if nothing else, you'll get to see what this tank looked like before I had the algae under control. But what you'll see in that video is across the back glass, you will see this really beautiful algae that just flows. And it looks like green velvet. It's absolutely beautiful. But what that really is, is that long hair algae. And the reason it looks like velvet is because these garamis would work on it constantly. They were constantly in there chewing on it and nibbling on it. But they kept it cropped to about an eighth of an inch. So it had this nice flowing velvety look to it. That is what an algae eating fish does. If I had mollies in this tank or if I had platies, guppies, fish like that are algae eating fish. What most people think of when they ask for an algae eating fish is an off walks grazer. And I have a lot of them in this tank and that's part of what I did uh, in order to get the algae under the control in this tank is I put a lot of those types of fish in here. And in fact there's one of my more seldom seen one if you look really closely back there through the leaves is my whiptail catfish, my Farloella. And that is an off walks grazer. The Otocinclus I have in this tank, these little guys, those are off walks grazers. 
I have rubber lip plecos, sometimes called rubber nose plecos. Those are off walks grazers. My Chinese algae eater that I have in my um, angelfish tank. I'm looking to see if I, he's out and I don't see him anywhere, so we're not going to go have a look. Those are off walks grazers. Any type of sucker mouth fish, any type of fish that most people tend to think of a cleaner fish that's going to scrape their rocks clean, is going to scrape the glass clean. That is what an off walks grazer is. And there's a big difference between that and an algae eater. I've learned to differentiate and I've learned to ask some follow-up questions because I've had people say, well, I've, you know, you, everybody says that mollies are great algae eaters and I've put them in my tank and my glass is still filthy. Well, they, they don't scrape your glass. That's not what an algae eating fish does. That's an off walks grazer. So that's my little two cents on the difference between an off walks grazer and an algae eater. But I do want to get back to this tank momentarily and discuss having an algae eater versus an off walks grazer in this tank. Now it's pretty apparent that I'm not going to be able to get rid of the algae. I've explained before and I'll mention again that algae is not a macro plant. It is a single celled organism. It grows as a colony. So all you've got to do is have one little piece of algae is still alive, one single cell, and it will start growing back. When you try to clean it and it's in the water and you're wiping and scrubbing, you're knocking it to pieces. You're knocking millions and millions of cells loose that then spread all over the tank. You can see I've actually got it growing on the glass over here already. Uh, I'm going to have issues with this spirogyra algae in this tank. I don't mind it. I like the way it looks, but I want it to be kept under control. I don't want strands of it flowing through the tank. If you've ever looked at a pond and it has that green, scummy looking stuff floating on the top and mats, or if you look at somebody's, um, you know, if they have a water feature in their property and it's ill-kept and you can see all that like flowing strands of green stringy stuff everywhere, that's what this is. That's what spirogyra algae is, and it's tough as nails to get out of your tank. So, if, you know, if I don't have something in there that's going to keep it under control to some degree, it's just going to be out of control. <laughs> I know that makes a lot of sense, right? Um, you can already see how quickly it's beginning to grow here. If Oliver Fred doesn't know what to focus on, there we go. It's kind of it's trying to. I guess you see the point. Um, for those of you who watched recently, I shot the video about trying to get that sparkle with the water movement and the LEDs. I did move the power head to the front of the tank. It's making disturbance directly under the LEDs and I'm getting a lot more sparkle. Um, I have found all of the LEDs that I removed from my Garami tank and I'm thinking about putting them on here just to have a look and see how it looks with nothing but LEDs on it. So that will be a video you'll want to tune in for here soon. Uh, I should be doing that within the next couple of days. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, so maybe tomorrow that'll be something to do. At any rate, I think if I do that, I'm going to have a lot of issues. Again, refer to that other video, watch it, you'll understand what I mean. Um, I think I'm going to have the same issues in this tank that I had in my Garami tank if I put the same lighting on it. So I don't know if I'm willing to do that. Uh, I may, and then just say to hell with it, and we can figure out what to do about the algae later. But I really need to get myself some sort of algae-eating fish in this tank, or some sort of off walks grazer. I'd be okay with that too. It's just the wrong time of year to do that. I want to try to get an eastern stone roller in here, and I think, or a central stone roller, I'm sorry. And I think that will be a good off walks grazer to work on the wood. It'll keep the rocks clean. And then I'm not too worried about the glass. If necessary, I can get in there and deal with the glass. Uh, one more thing I wanted to note before I forget when I was talking about the algae, when you scrape it and you knock it loose, um, you also make it angry, as I like to think, when you knock it loose like that. You're not just knocking it loose and spreading it around the tank. When it gets disturbed and broken up like that, it actually releases hormones that cause it to go into like hyperbreeding mode. 
Um, I suppose it's a defense mechanism when it's being destroyed or damaged, and it just goes crazy with the breeding. So the more you attack it physically and try to remove it from your tank, the more you actually spread this stuff around your tank. I, I, I'm not kidding when I say this stuff is tough as nails. It's really hard to get out of your tank once you get it in there. I'm not going to mess with treating it with anything. Uh, we're a long way from having to worry about that. Again, the tank doesn't even begin to look bad yet. Um, so we'll see where we go with that. We're going to see what happens with the lighting, and then we're going to see what I can do about getting some more stock in this tank, being that it's the middle of winter. I don't really know how I'm going to work that out just yet. Worst case scenario, if I had to, I could get some flagfish or I could get some mollies to put in here I could get some guppies to put in here and it would be something that technically qualified as being North American native uh, you know but then I'd probably have to get those out of here come springtime when I was going to stock it up for real and I really don't know if I want to try to get fish out of here uh, like that I could maybe do guppies and then the guppies would just become food once I put something else in the tank don't really know if I want to do that uh, it may become necessary, though. I may have to do something that is going to keep this algae under control because this stuff is about to explode. You know, it's come back with a vengeance over the last couple of days, and it's already starting to grow on the glass. And, you know, I just, I've been around the block with this stuff. I know what I'm dealing with, and I know what I'm about to experience in this tank. So we're going to have to get some kind of algae control going on in this tank. So thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed. You don't want to miss any of that good stuff coming up or the tank, uh, the video I'm going to do about the lighting in this tank with the LEDs. I'm really shooting for that sparkle and twinkle through the whole tank. So you don't want to miss that either. So thanks again for watching this one. Hope you enjoyed it. Maybe you learned something. Hope you did. Uh, I will see you real soon on the next one.